I've never played a Pokemon game before, I'll just say that up front. I haven't even watched somebody play one, and I figured it's about time to change that. Now, there are a lot of different Pokemon games to choose from, but when I was looking into which one would make a good first step into the franchise, one name really stood out to me, and that was Pokemon Black. People were saying that it was a game that took a lot of good risks in an otherwise safe franchise. It was the good kind of challenging, and not too focused on long grinds. They did say it was pretty linear, and at times sort of forced its story down your throat, but from what I read, a lot of people also said that it had by far the best story of any Pokemon game. So, I figured I'd give it a try and see what it was all about. Oh, and I'm also making my Pokemon deaths permanent, and only allowing myself one of each Pokemon. What's the worst that could happen, right? The game starts out in my bedroom, with my best friends Bianca and Sharon. This is where we pick our first Pokemon, and I end up going for the water type Oshawott, which I name Eva, cause it's gonna live for Eva. Hey, Aiden! Yeah? Think fast! Okay, first battle, then. Well, this gives us a chance to become accustomed to Eva, at least. At the moment, it has two moves, one that lowers the enemy's defense, and then one that's just a normal damaging attack. Bianca took the Tepig, which doesn't mean anything to me, other than that she's got better taste than Sharon, because Snivy is the only one of these three I would not invite to, like, a dinner party. <laughs> I win the fight pretty easily. Bianca's okay, but I've got a lot more to lose, considering this is permadeath. Uh, I, I just had more to fight for, I guess. <sighs> you may have beaten me, but I made your room suck! Yeah, at, at this point, Bianca is winning the war. I fight Sharon next, but his guy looks like he wears ironic t-shirts. I win very easily. <laughs> Not bad, Aiden. But you better watch out. One day, I'm going to be the best Pokemon trainer in the world. Oh, you can- all yours. You can have it. I'm in it for the money. And the love? Uh, Pokemon champion prestige? Yeah, it's... Look, I need the money, dude. Soon. I see you received the Pokemon I sent for you three. Ready for your adventure now, are you? Yep, uh-huh. I'm not paying you for this Pokemon, by the way. This is Professor Juniper. She's kind of the Pokemon expert of the town, and she's the one sending the three of us out to get more Pokemon data for her studies. Though Sharon seems more interested in becoming the Pokemon champion, and my character seems to be in it for the money. I Professor Juniper gives us all some Pokeballs, and then shows us how to catch a Pokemon. Basically, you get its health lower, and then throw a Pokeball, boom, you've caught it. She demonstrates all of this on an untrustworthy beaver, and then heads off to Town. We're all headed there too, we'll meet her there. But between us and Town, there's quite a lot of wild Pokemon, so let's go through what we get, shall we? The first one we run into is a Lollipop, uh, Lillipop, uh, and it looks interesting, so I catch it. The description seems like a good omen, you know, it faces strong opponents with great courage, but when it's at a disadvantage it leaves. That's, you know, in a permadeath run, that's pretty much exactly what you want. Uh, so I name it Chuppapup, and initiate it with a test of loyalty by having it slay one of its own. Next we fight and catch a Pat Rat too. This is the untrustworthy beaver, and I still don't trust this guy, so I name it Deceiver. Both of these guys just have a defense-lowering move and a basic attack at the moment, just like Eva. Oh, yeah, scratch that, actually. While I was having Chuppapup kill and eat the meat of another one of its own, Eva leveled up and now has a new move called Water Gun, which seems to just be a slightly worse power tackle, but it's under the category Special instead of Physical, uh, I'm guessing that means it does cool water stuff against water's natural enemies, and not much against the rest. So I'll keep that in mind if I run into any dirt. I walk around the area a bit, but there doesn't seem to be any other types of Pokemon here, and I'm only allowed to catch one of each, so I move on pretty quick. I'm in the Pokemon Center. Welcome to Accumulatown. This here is a Pokemon Center. They have all sorts of goodies for your journey in here, and you'll find places like it all over. You can get your Pokemon healed here at any time, and it's totally free. Free? 
How can they afford all of the medicine? Through generous donations, mostly. But also, the medicine sort of sucks a little bit. If your Pokémon gets hurt too badly, there's nothing they can do for them. I heard they harvest fainted Pokémon's organs to make up the missing cash. Aren't Pokémon Centers amazing? That is not true, Bianca. Oh, don't you like Pokémon Centers? This is where you store the Pokémon you aren't using. You can only have six on you at a time. And this is where you can buy supplies for your adventure. Pokeballs, potions for healing your Pokemon during or between battles, everything you need. Oh, do you think they have any spare Tepig lungs? Just in case? Bianca, stop it. I'll see you two later. I've got to head off now. Hey, Aiden, if you distract the clerks, I can try sneaking the back. I bet they have Oshawott organs too, you never know. Yeah, how about you distract them and I'll check. Okay. <laughs> Where's that laughter coming from? And I worked hard as a kid, you know. Every day I was working. I had a mean boss too, you know. One day he overheard me call the work back breaking. Called me up to make sure I knew we weren't allowed no breaks. <laughs> I tell you, I got no respect. No respect at all. I bought myself a little lighter the other day. Clerk tells me I could stand to be a little lighter myself, you know. <laughs> I went to my doctor. I told him, Doctor, I'm so stressed I just can't take it no more. I can hardly sleep. Can you give me something to make me feel better? The doctor says, Getsis, I can give you a beautiful wife. A kid that'll never stop smiling. And a Pokemon with a beautiful coat of fur. He referred me to a taxidermist! <laughs> What the hell was that? It was just a little stand-up comedy fundraiser for Team Plasma. A Team Plasma? They're a charity. Biggest in the region. They raise money to give mistreated Pokémon better lives. Well, they can't raise all that much. No respect, I tell you. Hey, are you seriously not giving Getsis respect right now? He's the leader of Team Plasma. He's a good man. Oh, sorry, dude. Are you with Team Plasma too? Yeah. My name's N. I'm an aspiring Pokemon trainer working Sorry, with... I think the dialogue box glitched. What's your name? N. I'm an aspiring- Oh, no, the voice- the voice is reading it as just the letter too. That's actually your name. Is it short for something? None of your business. Yeah, I can see why it's short. Uh, Pokemon battle me. Loser has to shut up about the winner's name. And vice versa. Whoa, alright. So, uh, that was sudden. This guy's Pokemon is a level 7, which makes it the hardest one I've faced yet, and also likely to stomp anyone in my roster other than Eva. I lower its defense, it lowers my attack, and at the end of the day we've just wasted time, so we both go nuts. Ooh! Eva is doing like double the damage of his purple cat thing. By the fourth turn, or the third if you don't count that first one, good go. The battle is over, and Eva levels up again. Eh. You have one intelligent Pokemon there. Yeah, thanks, I was doing that. It was me. I chose the moves. I'm the intelligent one. Not the moves. I mean what it said to me during the battle. Grunting? No. I... Oh, sorry. Oh, I should have mentioned. I can speak to Pokemon. You can... Really? Oh, yeah. In a couple of other languages, too, actually. You know, uh, Turkish, Korean, Spanish, English. I just like learning them. Wow. So what was your first language, then? Didn't have one. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't speak until I was, like, one or two. Well, I'll be seeing ya. Dude's name was N. Okay, great. Well, I'm all stocked up on healing potions and Pokeballs to catch more guys, and my team's at full HP, so I'm just about ready to go carry on my journey. The next stop is going to have to be Striaton City and its Pokemon Gym, because beating gym leaders is apparently how you rise up the Pokemon ranks and make the most money. I I'm not sure why the main character of this game is so desperate for money yet, but they might explain that later on. Ag again, I've heard this game's story is really good, so they'll probably get into it. It's a long hike to the city. It takes takes most of the day, and the route is covered in Pokemon trainers looking to fight. Beating them gives you money though, which is nice, puts you towards the apparent end goal of the game, excessive wealth. Chupapup kills some more of his own kind. I do catch one of those purple cat things that dude named N had. I'll be honest, I don't care about this cat very much. I just want it because N had one, and that guy was weird. I don't want him 
having stuff that I don't have. I name it Greed. One of the random Pokemon trainers has one too. Greed is immediately way less valuable than I evaluated him to be, and I was lowballing. She was talking about how cute it is and how much she loves seeing it be cute, and you know, helpless things are generally cute, so I helped her out, gave it a severe concussion and major internal hemorrhage, and somewhere along the way, Chopapup learned how to bite, which is gonna make future cannibalism way easier. It's classified as a dark move, which uh, seems appropriate. I'm trying to balance out my leveling, because at the moment my lower level guys are already really hard to use, and I want to fix that before they become impossible to use. If all my eggs are in one Pokemon basket and that Pokemon dies, then my goose egg is cooked. I'm also sort of learning the game, because that bite move, classed as dark, is ineffective against the purple cats, because uh, it's a dark type Pokemon, which makes sense. And about that, I may not know much about Pokemon, but I'm still a human, you know? Like, water is probably good against fire, that makes sense. I'm not worried about that. I, I'm just wary that there is, like, a fairy type and ghost type. And I'll be honest, all my years as a human, never found out how to counter fairies and ghosts. Uh, fire would pr presumably work on the fairies, I don't know if the game works by real-world logic. Fire would definitely work on fairies in real life. I'm pretty much at the city by this point. Chopapup rips the throat out of a little boy's pet lilypup. I didn't even tell it to do that this time. I just trained it too well. It, it smelled the lilypup, it just went for it. Hey, Aiden, did you get the tepic lungs? I was distracting them for 14 hours. Uh, no, but I did get a lilypup throat. You didn't actually go in the Pokemon Center storage room, did you? No. Let's fight about it. Oh god, another Bianca fight. I still need to heal up my guys, and she sends out a lily pup? Down, boy! Down! This is a friend! This is a friend! Uh, Chopper pup bites Bianca's lily pup so hard that it doesn't even get to make a move. Aiden, why is Chopper pup's fur so matted with blood? Uh, well, uh, Chopper pup's level 10. Now, I'm gonna switch to Eva real fast. Hey, I was right about being human. Tepic uses a fire move, and it sucks, because Eva's made of water. Well, I mean, partially. Like, she's, she's, water, she's water type. Water gun! It instantly kills the Tepic, and we have a level 10 Eva now. I... I have learned. Wow! That was amazing, Aiden! Okay, I've really gotta go get Tepic those replacement lungs now. These ones are all full of water. Catch you later! Yeah, that was, uh... That was good, wasn't it? Well, uh, I'm in the city now, so next up, gym leader, gym badge, gym success, big cash, we'll see. <laughs>